thought I might need an umbrella for this week's Wednesday walk around, um, but I'm not sure that this uh, Wisteria Sunensis is quite going to keep the rain off. Fortunately, the sun's actually out this morning. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? These cascades of gorgeous classic wisteria blooms. Um, we'll uh, see a few more wisterias further around the nursery today. Just here, actually, I'm just by the uh, rhododendrons. We've got some lovely ones in, they're all just starting to come out. Got some lovely dark pinks here. Uh, that's Germania. We've got the Cunningham's White, which always looks stunning in full bloom. Some lovely lighter pink ones. Some of the um, Red Jack there are just coming out. A beautiful pink at the back there. The white ones there. So there's, some of them are, are really still in quite tight bud and some of them are in full flow. So that very much depends on the variety and also the position. Um, the ones that we've got are slightly more shady um, are, are not out nearly as much. Um, we've got a beautiful, um, what would be called an azalea, um, the, one of the azalea type rhodos here, lovely orangey colour. More pink ones in our smaller offerings. This one's actually sort of slightly more single flower. This is a lovely frilly double one. And again, we've got the ones with the beautiful um, patterned throats to them. Some of them start off with sort of darker buds like this pink here. And then they come out to this sort of paler, but really beautiful blush flower. And round here, look at this stunner. Marcel Menard, that one, that is absolutely gorgeous, dark dark purple colour. They're among my favourite ones of the rhododendrons actually. Um, I'll just bring you around here and uh, a, few, a few more lovely things. I mean the um, Ceanothus is still going. It's a bit dark. I don't know if you can see those very well. It's still going. There's actually a little bit of blossom still on some of the trees down there. Probably can't see it very well into the sun. Um, and this uh, Circus, these Circus just keep going. Um, this is that Ruby Falls we looked at before. If I can stand back a bit and show you that in its full glory. And that is right next to the lovely Wisteria trellises. So we've got the white one there. We've got the classic sort of bluey purple Sinensis. Um, we've even got a couple of these, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's a half standard Wisteria um, and they look absolutely beautiful. Um, real little feature. One thing that always surprises people every year is the Fetinia Red Robin actually flowering. I've had people say that they've never seen them in flower. I've had people ask me if it's normal that they flower. Um, and actually, yes, they do. But they tend to be maintained in such a way that it interrupts the flowering process. So you don't always get the flowers if you clip them a couple of times a year as a hedge or as a standard. Um, but actually, if you let them go, again, hopefully you can see that, you get masses and masses of highly fragrant flowers. They're really quite stunning. The only thing with uh, the Fetinia when it flowers is that once the flowers go over, it can leave your plant looking a little bit thin or sparse. Um, that's perfectly normal. It's just the space the flowers have taken up and the energy it's put into the flowers. But give it uh, a few months and they'll leaf up fully and bounce back and look absolutely beautiful. So that's not a problem. Uh, there's another wisteria here. Hopefully that's focusing okay. Um, this is again one of the lovely white ones, but this is a slightly larger specimen than we than we sometimes have in. Um, these are the ones that we sell the most of here. So this is just uh, a stem or two upper cane, um, 1.75 to 2 meters. Um, and you've got a really good range. So again, you've got prolific here, the Sinensis, which is the classic um, the sort of bluey, purpley, um, paler as the, the flowers fade. Um, some of them aren't quite out yet. The Floribundas, these are absolutely beautiful. They're not quite there. Um, and then we've got, uh, what have we got? Uh, Yokohama Fuji, that's a slightly darker one. Um, that's it, we've so Amethyst Falls um, actually is um, 
it, it's the American wisteria. It's the slightly um, s s less vigorous, shall we say. Wisterias generally are very vigorous. Um, this one is, as you see, still in type bud. It's a slightly later flowerer, um, but it is uh, slightly less vigorous than the, the Chinese wisterias. Um, so it's a good option if you want something that doesn't need to go quite as big and, and blousy. Um, and oh, we've got a couple on the trellises here as well. So we've got a pink one. I actually really quite like the pink ones. The individual flowers are quite big on those. Um, so that's really pretty. And then we've got another one of the, um, the Formosa. The Formosa types tend to be the ones with these really, really long panicles of loads and loads of slightly differently toned flowers. Um, so they're really, really beautiful. Sorry, everything's a bit wet. Um, now, we've had a request for uh, a look at um, tree ferns and bananas and other tropical kind of things. So if we come into our covered area here, let me show you what we've got. So, got some lovely tree ferns there and some normal ferns. They complement each other quite nicely because they go for the same conditions. You've got the Orcuba um, japonica here as well, which again, it is a perfect shrub for a, a darker, shadier position and with the variegation adds a real splash of colour. Um, got some bananas at the back there, some of these little fatsia spiders webs. Got some more of the um, tree ferns. As you can see, we've got all sorts of shapes and sizes of the tree ferns. We've got these monsters in the middle here as well. They're absolutely brilliant. They're seven foot. Um, Again, the, the classic um, straight green Fatsia japonica um, goes really well with the sort of tropical look, but for a fully hardy plant. And then this is the bananas we've got in at the moment. So they're just uh, coming back into leaf, which is quite nice. They all seem to have just really perked up in the last couple of weeks, producing lots of lovely new growth. And some of them have even got little babies in the pots as well. So this is the lush tropical area in here. If I come back around here, we've also got the Laura Petalum still going with those beautiful, beautiful papery flowers. Again, I said before, that's a really good one because uh, it's an evergreen and it's got beautiful flowers, but it does need a sheltered position. Um, and back around here, just coming back to the Camellia Cupido that we looked at last week. Still looking beautiful. If I just do a quick sweep around in here, you can see we've got all sorts going. The gunner is really coming on now. And there's one more thing I want to show you before I sign off for the day. And that is the progress of our little resident blue tip. Hopefully she'll be sat on her nest for me to show you darker in here right here we go and there she is sat on her nest she's got six or seven eggs in there she's been sitting for a few days now so um, hopefully in a few weeks time I'll have some good news so that's uh, that's it for today's thankfully not wet Wednesday walk around um, again if you've got anything that you'd like to see next week, do let me know in the comments. Um, and I'm still here to help, answer questions, etc. So stay safe, stay sane, and uh, keep gardening. See you next week. Bye-bye.